must pay attention to the signs. We all must what? Pay attention to the signs. The final eruption of Mount St. Helens in May of 1980 was not a sudden event. For two months prior to the massive blast, the most deadly and destructive in American history, earthquakes and volcanic activity signaled a major event was on the way. Authorities had pleaded, had plenty of time to sound the alarm and warn those living nearby of the looming danger. Yet, despite the seriousness of the threat, some people chose to disregard the warning. Probably the most well-known, the best known who refused to evacuate was a man by the name of Harry Randall Truman. The 83-year-old man was the owner and caretaker of Mount St. Helens Lodge at Spirit Lake. He survived the sinking of his troop ship by the German submarine off the coast of Ireland during World War I. He survived that. And he was not about to leave just because scientists thought that there was, there was danger. Truman told reporters, I don't have any idea whether it would blow or not. But I don't believe it to the point that I'm going to pick up and leave. On May 18, 1980, Truman and his lords were buried beneath 150 feet of mud. body was never found. And just like Mr. Truman failed to pay attention to the signs, this generation is making the same mistake. Not responding, not Paying attention to the signs. We must be careful with how we respond to the signs. The question we hope to answer this morning is why must we be careful with how we respond to God's signs. Now, if you read this passage too quickly, you will miss something. I want to take a few minutes and do a little examination of this particular text. It has more in it than what meets the eye. Why must we be careful with how we respond to God's sign. Do you not know that not responding properly to God's sign can cause us to miss them all together? Not responding properly to God's sign will cause the, us to miss it all together. Let me tell you something. It's just like some of you. Because you, you see signs along the way. 
And there is something that I see more than I would ever imagine. And I take notice, Brother Jones, and I watch when I pass vehicles. And I notice something that's going on today. Almost every car I pass is on the phone. I am not kidding you. It blows my mind. And if you're spending too much time with your phone, you will miss the signs. Y'all watching now. Notice the text. And when the people were what? And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. Could you imagine being in the midst when Jesus is talking and addressing the masses of people? There were many people assembled and the Lord just said, what? This is a what? An evil generation. This is an evil, an evil generation. Imagine sitting there in this audience. And what else did he say? They seek a sign. They seek what? They seek a sign. Notice God said the evil generation seeks a sign. You better get this. Why would an evil generation be seeking a sign? I'm going to answer you because they are evil. Let me explain something to you in case you missed this. Let me show you not paying attention to the sign will cause you to miss it all together. See, a sign is an indication. See, as an, y'all know what an indication is. There's something that happens that, that, that are indications of other things. For example, when they saw the earthquake, when they saw the volcanic activity, that was an indication that something was getting ready to happen. So when God talks about a sign, he's talking about an indication. Uh-oh. Y'all watching. Come on, read that next part. And there shall no sign be given in but the sign of Jonas the prophet. Let me show you something about sign. God said that evil generation seeks a sign, and God said, I'm not giving you one. The only sign that I'm going to give you is the sign of Jonah the prophet. That's all I'm going to give you. Y'all follow this now. Let me show you something. Go to Matthew 16, verse 1 through 4, real quick. Show you something about these signs. The Pharisees also, when the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he should show them a sign from heaven. They wanted to see what? Show them a sign from heaven. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, When in this evening ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh for after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left him and departed. Now, some of us may miss that, so let me help you a little bit. Notice, not everybody was looking for a sign. But the wicked and adulterous generation was seeking 
a sign. I remember going when I was in high school, that was a friend of mine that was a real good football player. And I remember a conversation that we had about him playing football on the South. He had gotten a scholarship to Arkansas. And I asked him, man, how you going to do that? How you going to play football on the Sabbath? What if Jesus was getting ready to come back? That's what he told me. He said, when I see certain things happen, I'm going to quit. You missed that. I'm going to quit when I see certain things happen. In other words, he was he would play until he saw a sign. But what that really meant was he wasn't true to God. He would only use God as a fire escape. He wouldn't stop sinning unless he saw a sign. And some of us can know we're wrong. But we won't quit until we get in that car wreck. We won't quit until we get a bad diagnosis. Looking for a sign. See, everybody's not like that. Some folk diligently serve God without a sign. Some folk diligently serve God Without a car wreck. See, he said it's the it's the adulterous generation that's looking for some sign. Why aren't we all where we need to be now? If the government start passing certain, all of a sudden we see we can do better, but why haven't we done better? Looking for some sign to change. Looking for a sign to turn. God said that's a wicked generation that does that. Because see, God's people ought to be moving right now. And I see why the master said we ought to be ready. Even when we don't think Jesus is coming. See, when your heart is right, you're motivated to serve God and to be right with God without some sign. Amen. Oh, you got to watch it now. Yeah. Good. You see, you, you hypocrites, man. You can tell. You can discern these times. You can tell when it's going to rain. You can tell when a storm is coming. You can tell the signs in the elements, but you can't tell the signs of these times. He said, I'm not going to give you a sign. I'm not even going to let that car wreck happen. I'm not going to give you a bad diagnosis. I'm not going to give you a sign to change. What that does, without the sign that they're looking for, let me tell you something, they're not going to make it. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Brother, sister, when Jesus said we need to stay ready and we need to be ready, when we get up in the morning, we need to make sure we're ready. Before we lie down at night, we need to make sure we are ready. And you, listen, you want to make sure that you have a clear conscience about everything at all times. All that Jesus, Jesus himself should have been enough. Do y'all get that? The scribes and Pharisees missed the sign, Jesus. What you mean, missed the sign, Jesus? Did you know that, watch this, did you know Jesus was a sign? 
He just told you Jonas was a sign, right? Let me show you something real quick. See, not only does not responding properly to God can cause us to miss the sign altogether, but not, re listen, but responding properly to God's sign can save you. Wait a minute. Responding properly can what? Save you. Let me show you what, what, what Jesus is, is sharing with us. Look at Luke. Start at verse 29 again. Y'all watch this and get this. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given them, but the sign of Jonas. The, the sign of what? The sign of Jonas the prophet. How many of you knew that Jonas was a sign? Jonas was a God-given sign. Y'all watch this. And God said, that's the only sign I'm going to give this generation. Jonah's time had passed. He said, Jonah's was a sign, and that's the only sign that I'm going to give this generation. Y'all watch this. Read the next part of that. The queen of the south. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Wait a minute. So as Jonas was a sign, the Bible said what? Was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Wait a minute. So you got two signs there. You got one sign was who? Jonas. And now you have another sign, which was who? Y'all watch this. See, we better start paying attention to the signs. And we, when we see signs, we need to make sure we respond accordingly. We need to make sure, you know, it's just like when you see a sign with a, a curve, a deep curve, you see that sign. Before you get to the curve, it's an indication that you are coming up on a curve. And if you don't make sure that you pay attention and respond properly, you could end up in a serious wreck. A lot of people end up in serious wrecks because they don't respond properly to signs. The Bible said Jonas was a sign. Anybody there like Jonah? Are you a sign? Y'all watch God now. I want you to pay attention. Jonah 1. Let me show you Jonah the sign. Jonah 1, verse 1 and 2. Read that real quick. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now notice God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. It's a wicked city. Now granted, they didn't know who Jonas was. They hadn't heard of Jonas. But God told him to go. They are a wicked people. Y'all watch this. And he said, for their wickedness is come up before me. Chapter 3, verse 2 through 10, Jonas 3. I want y'all to see this, what, how this went down. The Bible said Jonas was a sign. And, and, and I'm trying to help us to learn how to pay attention and how to respond properly to signs. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, mm. and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Go to Nineveh and preach what I tell you to preach. I'm a 
give you a message and you preach that message. Y'all watch this. Read. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. Got there in a hurry, didn't he? Took three days. He made it in one day. Don't tell me what a good whooping won't do to you and won't do for you. He got in a hurry. Some of y'all know I don't have time to get into it. You know what happened when the fish got him and when he was, he said he was in hell for three days and three nights and he was crying out to God, please let me out of here. Disobedience would get you. Come on, read real quick. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Wait a minute. He started to tell the people how long did they have? Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So he went out and he told the people that they had 40 days before Nineveh was going to be destroyed. Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites. Y'all watch this. He told them, you got 40 days to change your ways. You got 40 days to overcome. You got 40 days to stop your mess, stop your dirt, to overcome what you're doing. 40 days. Verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Did he say they believed God? Amen. And they proclaimed they what? A fast. They pushed away from the table when they learned that God had a problem with their lifestyles. When they, when they learned that God wasn't pleased with their decision making, how they were behaving and conducting themselves, when they learned that God was going to bring judgment, they stopped it. They said, you don't have no appetite, man. I, this ain't no time to eat. We need to do what it takes to get right with God. And they begin to push away from the table. It's sad, it's sad, it's sad when we can't see the sign. Y'all watch this, read. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Wait a minute, the king? The king took off those, those kingly robes and those kingly garments. The Bible said he took them off, and he traded them for some what? Sackcloth and some ashes. And the Bible said he got down and he sat down. In the action when he was showing God, I'm nothing before you. Yes, I had a crown, but I lay it down to get my life right with you. Whatever I need to do to have peace with you, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down off this throne, and I'm not gonna be nobody before you because I need your help, and I watch me now. It's something about when you recognize who God is and that you, you do nothing before God. It's something about when you come to the realization that it's all about the power that rests in the living God. It's something about when you come to that realization. You don't come in church like it's all about you, like you somebody. Watch me now. You come humbly. That's when you recognize who God is. Now you talking about the king of Nineveh. Watch God now. The king sat down in ashes. Do you know what that takes? It takes a great deal of humbling, humility. Because you, because most folk have too much pride. To sit down in some ashes when you're supposed to be somebody. Uh, 
watch it. Read. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. What did he decree? Watch this. Saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Wait a minute. The king said, listen, I don't want your dogs eating. I don't want your cows eating. I don't want your ducks, your chicken. I don't want nothing eating. I don't want no man, no woman, no boy, no cow. I know sometimes, see, because, it's, because we don't see it as important as we do. When we fast, we say, but, 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 but let the kids, but let the kids, mm, let me tell you something, when it means enough, don't nobody eat. My child is going to suffer for the kingdom's sake. My child is going to suffer to help me to get our acts together. My dog is going to suffer. My cows are going to suffer. Everybody's going to suffer until we get this thing right. And see, you, you, you think God was just saying that when he said this time, this kind, come only out by fasting and praying. Y'all know when it's, when, when it's on the line, when it's, when it's pressing, what they all resorted to do. Ask Esther when she didn't have an alternative. See, then she pushed away from the table. The king commanded nobody eat. Let me show you what they did. Read on. Watch this. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. And cry mightily to who? Unto God. They didn't even worship God. But it's something about when they heard Jonah, when they heard the message from God, they saw Jonah as a sign from God. Y'all missed this. They saw Jonah as a sign from God. He was warning them to change. And they didn't ignore Jonah. They didn't ignore the sign. What did they do? Read it for yourselves. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way. Let what? Let them turn every one from his evil way. And from the violence that is in their hands. <laughs> the king commanded everybody, Brother Tony, stop your dirt. He told Brenda, stop your dirt. Rope, stop it. He told Public, stop you. Stop playing. Amen, amen, amen. Stop it. Stop it. Was what he told hey. all the people. Stop doing what you're doing. Brother, stop cheating. Stop lying. Stop what you're doing. Watch it. Read on. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you get that? He said, man, God may turn from his judgment that he said he, he may not destroy us if we repent. We don't have to perish if we change. We don't have to perish if we turn. Right there. Let me tell you something. Verse 10. The Bible says, and God saw what? And God saw their works. What did they do? Then they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them. And he did it not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So Jonah was a sign. And I want you to understand. Jonah had the, the Ninevites had the right response to the sign. They made adjustments to the sign. They responded properly to the sign. They stopped. They repented. They changed. Hey, 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 hey. They got the sign. And they changed. Hey. They got the sign. And they turned from their sin. They heeded the sign. They heeded the warning. That's right. Heeded. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Look at this generation. Praise Let me show you something. Not only, listen, 
not responding properly to God, God's sign can cause us to miss it altogether. Not responding. No, I'm sorry. Responding properly to God's sign can save you. Because the Ninevites responded properly, they were saved. Thirdly, and finally, responding, listen, not responding properly. What did I say? Not responding properly to God's signs will determine how you fare in the judgment. Did y'all hear what I said? And I'm not kidding you. How you responding right now to the sign is what's going to determine how you fare in the, doing the judgment of God. How you treat the sign. How you respond to the sign. God told you Jonas was a sign and he told you also. Now I want y'all to see this for yourselves. Start at verse 30. Watch this. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites. Jonas was what? Was a sign unto the Ninevites. Come on. So shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Wait a minute. So shall who? So shall also the Son of Man. We got Jonah down. We know he was a sign. But few of us understood that Jesus was also a sign. How are we responding to that sign? We see how the Ninevites responded to their sign. But how are we responding to the sign of Jesus? Are we responding properly to that sign? I told you. How you respond or not responding properly. Is going to determine how you come out, how you fare in the judgment. You preach it, man. I'm gonna show you something. Crazy. See, a lot of times we don't think, yes, you know, we've gotten by with not responding. As we all sometimes, we, we, you know, we've gotten by so much until we miss a whole lot of signs or we are less attentive because we've gotten by. Yes, sir. This is not a sign that you can ignore and get by. Mm, yourself, man. See, some of y'all in no cause know you're going through a school zone. You know what the law is. The sign just told you there are penalties for driving through that school zone. Using those phones. And some of you be so slick. You do it anyway. And every now and then you get caught. And all the only reason you keep doing it because they hadn't pulled you over. And you hadn't had to pay yet. And the only reason some of us are ignoring the sign of Jesus is because we haven't had to pay yet. I'm going to tell you, when it's time to pay, it's too late. I know a young man. God, this hurts. He had just gotten out of prison a little while ago. Young man spent years. He got out of prison. Mm -hmm. He went down for selling drugs. He got out he started back selling drugs. Y'all mm. watch me now. Uh -huh. Watching his friends get killed. Watching people going back to prison. Right. He still right. ignored all of that. Mm. Right there. He continued to sell right. about a week ago. While out on Listen, he had been arrested a few weeks ago, and while out on uh, bail, he got caught coming from 
think Houston with all kind of bricks in his car. Heroin, cocaine, the watchman. They pulled him over, the cop had pulled him over and asked him if he just wanted to see that beautiful new vehicle. And after they saw it, they got left and he came back and called him. He said, the reason I stopped it this time, first time I stopped it to look at the truck. But this time I stopped it because I smelled something while I was at the truck. And when he checked the truck, he got all those drugs. The boy's a millionaire. Has so much. People were telling him, stop. Do something different. Stop. He refused to stop while he had the chance to stop. When they arrested him this time, there won't be no bail. Because you won't bail the first time. You won't, that won't be a bail. Because you violated your probation. Again. Every time we let you go, you go and do the same thing. You don't know when to stop. Y'all watch me now. That's a true story. It just happened here in this city. Not heeding, not responding properly to the signs. When you see the sign, you got to know how to conduct yourself. Amen. Jesus is a sign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this. You see Jesus. Now y'all watch this. Verse 31. This is so scary to me. Read verse 31. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment. Wait a minute. When? In the judgment. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment. Y'all know that's after Jesus has come. You know when, 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 when the judgment is. First of all, she's going to rise up. The Bible said the queen of the south. Y'all know that's the queen of sheep. She's going to. She said she's going to. The Bible says she's going to rise up in the judgment. And doesn't God know this is Jesus telling you this. Jesus said that woman, the queen of Sheba, is going to wake up in the judgment. And when she wake up, Lord, what's she going to do? Listen to this. This is sobering. What's she going to do, Lord, when she wake up in the judgment? Read it. With the men of this generation and condemned them. And what? And condemned them. Do you know what condemn is? When she, when she wakes up, the Bible says she's going to condemn those folk in that generation of Christ. And it won't be just that generation. It's going to be a whole lot of more so in this generation. They condemn. That means, y'all, they will condemn to hell. They, they will, when you look up that condemn, that's a, a condemnation that you won't have salvation. She condemned them. Why weren't they condemned? Listen to this. Y'all saw how they responded when Jonah preached. They changed. It helped them. It blessed them. They were motivated to do something different. But look at what she said about why this generation will be condemned. Read it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Some of y'all may miss that. Let me tell y'all what she was saying. She said, man, let me tell y'all something. When you go back and read in Kings, the 10th chapter, when you go back and read how that sister, when she started hearing about Solomon, she got all her entourage together. She got all her people together. She said, give me those campers. Give me those help. Give me everything. We going to Jerusalem. Let me tell you something. It took a lot of money to come from all across the earth to see 
to go see Solomon. And but she paid whatever it took. She got to see. She had to hear Solomon because she had heard about how great he was. She had heard about how wise he was. She had heard so much about him. And she didn't come empty-handed. The Bible says she brought gold. She brought all kinds of spices. She brought, she brought some of everything to Solomon when she came. She said, I brought all of, I brought so much of my kingdom to hear Solomon. But somebody greater than Solomon is here. And you folk don't make no sacrifices. Watch me. Somebody greater than Solomon is here. And you don't want to give him nothing. Somebody greater than Solomon is here, and you act like it's too much. Watch me now. You act like it's too much to, to do whatever it takes to hear Jesus, to sit at Jesus' feet. You act like it's too much going to the house. You talk about you don't have no gas. You talking about you tired, and somebody greater than Solomon is here. Jesus, Solomon couldn't touch Jesus. And you see what I did to get to Solomon. I would have done, ain't no telling what I would have done to get to Jesus. Somebody missing that? In other words, Sister Brother, what he was saying, there should be nothing that's restraining you, that's keeping you from doing your best for Christ. There should be nothing that stands between you and your master. That distance shouldn't matter. Traveling the world shouldn't matter. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worth every effort that it takes. Jesus is worthy. Your son has come. And you're not responding to him. Like you should have. Watch me now. She said, you see what I did. She said, the judgment is not going to be good for you. Because you didn't respond properly. What do you mean? Read the next part of this. Let me show you something. Uh oh, listen to this. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation. <laughs> And shall condemn. Wait a minute. Sheba is going to condemn this generation. Not only Sheba, but the Bible says the men of Nineveh are going to wake up. And they're going to look at your life. They're going to look at how you live. The men of Nineveh, they're going to check you out. The decisions that you made. How you treated Jesus. The men of Nineveh are going to wake up and shall what? And shall condemn it. <sighs> For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Wait a minute. Why are they condemning this generation? Because they did what? For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. When Jonah was preaching, they changed. They conformed. They stopped doing what they were doing. When they saw that they were outside the will of God, when they saw what they're doing wasn't pleasing to God, when Jonah warned them, they stopped. They changed. They laid that stuff down when Jonah preached to them. But that's not the day. But the last part of that. Read the last part. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, y'all missed that. See, the men of minimal, when they wake up, you're going to steal me. Then wait a minute. We changed when, when Jonah preached. When our sign came, we responded the way we should have. When our sign came, when Jonah preached the gospel, we, we laid it all down. We stopped talking crazy to each other. We stopped backbiting each other. We stopped not treating honoring each other. We stopped. And they're going to say, but you mean to tell me somebody greater 
Then Jonah came? You mean to tell me the son of God came to the earth? Watch me now. They didn't know this. You mean to tell me God wrapped his son up in the body and in flesh and came down and preached to this world? You mean to tell me the son of God came to the earth and ministered to God's people and they didn't repent? I don't know if y'all get that. But I'm going to tell you something. We keep ignoring the sign Jesus. And we need to be remembering Nineveh didn't ignore their sign. Nineveh changed. What's causing you? What's hindering you from giving it up? What's causing you not to change? Not to get the victory? Not to overcome? What's hindering you? What's hindering you? From laying it down. What's hindering you? Come on, saints. The Bible says when Jesus is telling you this, he's telling you because he's Alpha and Omega. He's telling you what's going to happen in the end. I'm learning this so I won't be in that number that's condemned. That means I got to pay attention to Jesus. I got to pay attention to what he said. I got to pay attention to the sign Jesus. And I got to respond appropriately to Jesus. I can't keep living like I've been living. I can't keep talking like I've been talking. I got to change now. We're waiting for a sign that's already come. And if you need something more than that, you're missing it. See, the scribes and Pharisees didn't know who Jesus really was because they were looking for another sign. But what they, what they missed, that sign Jesus was born of a virgin. Watch me now. Man didn't have nothing to do with this baby. See, they missed the sign. Because they wanted to see some other things. Like some of us want to see some other things before we change. I made up in my mind when I recognize Jesus as the sign, then I got to change. I got to respond appropriately. Watch me now. Watch me. See, Jesus was a sign for mankind. Did you get that? Jesus was a sign for mankind. Now, watch me now. Uh -huh. See, see, Jesus coming was a sign that God cared enough to send his son to show me and you the way. Mm -hmm. See, 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 Jesus was that, Jesus was that sign. See, Jesus coming and dying on a tree was a sign of God's love for me and you. When he spread his arms and he laid it down and died being fastened to a tree, that was a sign that somebody above loved you more than you loved yourself. See, we missed that sign. See, that was a token of God's love for humanity. And yet we missed it. See, let me show you something. When he gave Jesus, that was a sign that there was nothing that God wouldn't give for me and you. If he was willing to give his only son, there was nothing that he would keep back from our salvation. See, Jesus. See, a lot of people didn't know who Jesus was. But you better get this. Jesus knew that there were some doubters out there. But he got up. Y'all know the story? When they put him in the tomb, Pops, he didn't stay there. He rested the first day. And the Bible says he rested the second day. Watch me now. But early Sunday morning, the master got up with, 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 with guards around the tomb. He got up with deep prison watch around the tomb. Why did he allow him to be there to see him get up? Because he wanted the world to know. Death can't hold the son of a living God. Death can't keep God. Watch me now. He got up to show you and me that no matter what situation you find yourself 
in. God can wake you up. God can make a difference. You don't have to watch me now. Be content. God can change you. God has the power. In other words, if he has the power to wake you up from the dead, if he has the power to wake himself up from the dead, then there is nothing you should be fretting about because God has all power to make the difference in your life. Watch me now. Jesus was a sign to the world that God has visited his people. Jesus was an indicator that God cares about you. Jesus was the indicator that you are special to God. Jesus was an indicator that you don't have to stay in your sins. Jesus was an indicator that there is help for you. There is hope for you. You can have victory if you want it. Sisters and brothers, God, when he was healing, all of the infirmities of his people. He didn't leave nobody sick. Watch me now. The Bible says he healed every one of them. He took care of the blind. He took care of the council patients. Watch me now. He took care of polio. He took care of watchmen. There was no disease that the master didn't take care of. And the Bible says all the multitudes that were brought to him, he healed every one of them. God wanted you to know that I don't care how bad it is for you, Pop. I don't care what you're going through. There's help in Jesus. There's a sign that God would help you with your infirmities. Hey! And we missed that! Brothers and sisters, I just want you to know today, we need to leave here today being aware. Beware of the sign. Watch me now. Jesus is a sign. We need to leave in a day thinking about that sign. We need to leave in a day repenting of that sign. Watch me now. We need to make sure that we are mindful of that sign. And now that we know Jesus has come and that he's a sign to this dark world, we need to make sure that we respond to that sign. We need to make sure we respond properly to that sign. We're not going to reject him anymore. We're not going to be rebellious anymore. We're not going to fight him anymore. We're going to respond properly to that sign. We're going to let him work on us. We're going to let him heal us. We're going to let him lead us. We're going to let him guide us. We're going to let him do his will with us. Beware of the sign. Father in heaven, Lord, it is in the name of Jesus that we approach our throne. Even now, Lord, we don't want to make the mistake that the scribes and Pharisees made. Lord, they didn't repent. They didn't change when you came. Oh, Father, but we, we want to learn from their error. We want to learn from their mistakes. As Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. 